OCPS Video Services proudly presents Adventures in Geography. Today's episode, GIS and You. Hello, and welcome to Adventures in Geography. Today, we're going to explore the powerful computer software known as Geographic Information Systems, or GIS. This powerful mapping tool is used by governments and private companies all over the world to make and analyze maps. Have you ever used a phone app to find a nearby restaurant or movie theater? How about looking up the traffic or weather where you're headed? That's GIS. How about maps that compare places, like this U.S. map comparing population, or we can add data to a map to make smart decisions. Retailers use GIS to help them spot the best place for their next store. Once they gather data on their likely customers in a city, GIS can help put them on a map. Where would you put their next location? So how does Orange County Public Schools use GIS to help shape education in Central Florida? To find out, let's board our student-designed custom jet, Schoolhouse One, to get started. Let's fly! We're here at the Ronald Blocker Educational Leadership Center to talk with staff about how GIS helps them steer the course of future education. First up, Renata Parapche of the Pupil Assignment Department. Let's head inside. Hey Renata, can you tell us a little bit about Pupil Assignment and how you use GIS? I can't imagine Pupil Assignment operating without GIS. Our department designs school attendance boundary lines we also assign students to the right school based on address information. And if a school becomes overpopulated, we will rezone that area. The red lines represent elementary school boundary lines. Based on the student enrollment information and projection numbers, this area needs a new relief school. Now, we start looking very closely at the student population to determine which area needs to go to the new school. Based on the data provided, we determine that the green area will become a new King's Crossing Elementary School. The pink area will be the new zone for the relief school. The purple area becomes Sunset Park Elementary School. And the orange will be the new Sand Lake Elementary School. GIS provides many tools to help us make a decision. We can zoom to the street layer, we can use the parcel layer, and my favorite one is the aerial view. GIS is lots of fun. Thanks, Renata. Now let's head upstairs to the Planning and Governmental Relations Department where our resident demographer uses GIS to help predict where our future students will be. I'm here with Tom Moore to look at how student data helps us plan for future schools. Tommy, can you share with us how demographics and GIS helps us plan for upcoming schools? Sure, Brent. Um, demography is the study of human population. Specifically, I'm a school demographer, which means I determine how many students are going to be at each school in the future. Let me show you an example of what I do in GIS. And this is one of the many GIS analyses I do every year when updating projections. So in a nutshell, school projections or enrollment projections are done by modeling how many students of a particular grade level matriculate up to the next grade level. If you look at the GIS screen, I show elementary school attendance zones in red. Orange County Public Schools maintains this layer the census blocks are the small sections of neighborhoods shown in the thinner lines. The U.S. Census Bureau is responsible for these areas. The birth data we get from the Department of Health looks like this. It's basically just a tabular Excel file with census block identification numbers and the number of births for that planning year. The first step is to join this data with the census block layer based on their common ID. Okay, so now we have the census block polygons populated with the birth data. So now in order to determine the births within each attendance zone, we need to set up an equivalency between the zones and the blocks. We need to overlay these two layers to create new data. Now that census blocks have the school attendance zone attributes associated with them. From here, we can summarize the births by attendance zone and use them in our projections. 
So as you can see, Brent, GIS is truly an interdisciplinary tool. First of all, we used the U.S. Census Bureau's census block information. We used the Department, Florida Department of Health's birth information, as well as our own attendance zones. Well, thanks, Tommy. Working hand in hand with our developers that build new houses in our area is what our planning group does best. Let's catch up with Tyrone Smith and find out how we make that connection with GIS. Tyrone, can you describe the planning process and how you use GIS to bring it all together? Well, Brian, here in Planning, Government, and Relations, what we do is we use GIS to visually display data and analysis for CEAs, which are Capacity Enhancement Agreements, CMAs, Concurrency Mitigation Agreements, and also for all the other projects that we do when it concerns intergovernment relations. Well, for CEAs, Brent, we have to display where residential development is occurring, and we pass that on to our demographer. Part of that is displaying to the board and other school board members, along with the general community, where encumbered capacity is going to be. Through that, we use GIS to visually represent which properties are encumbered by capacity enhancements or concurrency mitigation agreements. Another aspect of government relations is how we interact with our local governments here in Orange County. Part of that is we are part of the pedestrian safety community, and in that committee, we use GIS to demonstrate how pedestrian safety is evaluated around our campuses to evaluate where accidents occur and also where pedestrian um, networks are incomplete or there are gaps. And we demonstrate that to the local government so they can go out and make the necessary repairs or infills. Thanks, Tyrone. We have one more stop to make, and that's to our transportation department to see how GIS keeps our students moving. So here we are at the Hanging Moss Bus Depot in Winter Park. Did you know that Orange County Public Schools operates over 900 school buses and drives 92,000 miles every school day? Let's talk to Bill Wynn and find out how GIS helps keep this massive operation running. Moving 70,000 of our students every single day is no easy task. How does GIS help this along? GIS is very important. With over 900 buses traveling over 18 million miles a year, it's critical that GIS helps us be more efficient and safe as well. We can also find our buses more quickly with our GPS program in the event of an emergency or a breakdown. And we also work with the Safety and Security Office to look where the school crossing guards are and to identify where all the pedestrian injuries and crashes may occur to make us more efficient there too. We use ArcGIS to update our maps, to update the streets, to do subdivisions that are out there, and also to make sure the buses travel the most efficient routes. Wow, thanks Bill. As you can see, it takes a lot of support to keep things running smoothly. Now, let's head for home. What a great trip. Today we learned how Orange County Public Schools uses GIS to keep our students learning and growing, not just today, but in the future as well. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Adventures in Geography. Thank you.